Okay, just wanted to go over something real quick concerning the uh, knobs that you see on the uh, front of the amplifiers, such as our crown here and such as our one of our QOCs up here. So these knobs on the front are not volume controls. These do not control the volume of the amplifier. What these are, are input attenuators. These control how sensitive the input stage is of the amplifier. The input stage is at that input point on the back of the amplifier. That's where you uh, connect your cable from either your crossover or your console when you're getting that signal into the amplifier. That's the input stage. These knobs control how sensitive that's, that stage is. So when the knobs are all the way over to their right, that means that the amplifier is most sensitive to a signal coming into it. And as we back off the knobs just a little bit, the amplifiers become less sensitive to an input signal. So for this, so for an example, this amplifier here, the Crown Macrotech, it requires 1.4 volts of electricity for it to run at the input stage, 1.4 volts at the input stage for this amplifier to reach its maximum output of power. Now, if we look up here at the QSC, we'll just turn these all the way to the right. This QSC, uh, this is a PLX2502. This one requires 1.2 volts for it to reach its maximum power. As long as the attenuators are full to the right, that's the voltage that they require for the amplifier to become, uh, for, for the amplifier to run at its full power. Okay, so now let's say we're going to turn these down here just a little bit. Give you an example here. And really, we don't need to have the electricity on. I mean, amps don't need to be on for this to show you this. Now, let's just say we turn, turn them down just a little bit, which I think uh, maybe some of you have seen uh, before in other shows, or maybe you do this yourself. What this is doing is when we turn them counterclockwise, we're setting the amplifier up so that it becomes less sensitive to the signals coming into it. Now, turning them down like this does not mean that the amplifier will not produce all the power it was designed to do. It still will. It's just going to take more voltage to drive the amplifier to produce that kind of uh, power. I mean, produce the power that it was designed to do. So even though you turn them down, once again, these are not volume controls. This just means that more voltage at the input stage is going to be required to have the amplifier run at its full power. Now, adjusting the input attenuators is acceptable up to a point. So if you need to turn something down just a little bit, uh, maybe you've got uh, channel A here on highs, mids and highs, maybe you've got this one on subs. You could set it something like this if you're, if you're running a crossover. But the problem is, is that if, it, if this gets turned counterclockwise too far, and I'm going to include the same up here on the QSC, if you find yourself turning these things down too far, the amplifier is probably oversized for what you're trying to use it for. So here's what happens when you start turning these input attenuators uh, counterclockwise too far, or you're starting to turn them down too far. What happens is the input stage of the amplifier can be overdriven. So as you're turning this down, it's requiring more and more voltage on the input stage for the amplifier to produce the power that it was designed to produce. Now, if you've got something down this far, I'll say this is a, it's a 3,500 watt per channel at four ohms. If it's sitting down this far, this amplifier is probably way oversized for the, for the speaker that it's trying to drive. And what happens is that as the input stage becomes overloaded, you start getting distortion. And people think that 
the distortions coming from the amplifier, the actual amplification of the signal, it's really not. The distortion is coming from the input stage of the amplifier because it's being overdriven by way too much voltage. Which is why turning these down to compensate for either too much power or maybe to compensate for something else uh, can be a bad idea. So for stage left audio, all of our amplifiers are run wide open. We control at the crossover how loud we want everything to be. Uh, for example, if we we're going to buy amp this amplifier, uh, we probably would turn this down a little bit, maybe to offer um, fuel, maybe some kind of, I'm not going to say protection, but some way to control the uh, how much amplification this side puts out. But really, all of our con level controls would be coming from our crossover. We would really wouldn't use this too much here to control the, the uh, volume level. Okay, so looking up here at, um, well, let's see if I can get this to go up here a bit. So looking at our QSCs, these are the uh, PLD series with all their uh, DSP built in. So if you look at this, QSC, this is the input stage. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, wrong amplifier. This is the input stage right here. And here's your output stage you're looking at. So you notice here on the input stage, this is four channels, you got the signal level coming in, but the area right above it, uh, these lights indicate clipping. So on, the, on this particular QSC, this one requires 1.2 volts for it to reach uh, full power. In other words, each channel would require 1.2 volts. But this one has the clip indicator on it so that if we start uh, going over, I'm not too sure what the overload level is, but this has an indicator in showing if our input stage is being overloaded. So hopefully this sheds some light on what these controls actually do. They do not control the volume level. They may seem like they control the volume level, but they don't. They control the input stage of the amplifier. And the more you turn it down to the left or counterclockwise means the less sensitive the amplifier is to the voltage that it's receiving. So in other words, it's going to take more voltage from your console or from your drive rack or crossover unit to drive the amplifier to its full power. With the controls all the way to the right, including up here on the QSC, all the way to the right, that means it is at its most sensitive state. Okay, if you're not too sure how much voltage your amplifier requires, take a look at the manual. It's usually referenced as the input sensitivity. Just look for that entry, input sensitivity in the manual, and that will tell you how many volts it requires to run. For another example of an input stage, uh, we're using the Yamaha, this is a DSR 15s that we use. As you can tell here, you've got a line level and you've got a mic level. The line level shows here it's plus 4 dBU. That plus 4 dBU equates to 1.2 volts of input, which is the same as the QSC amplifiers that we use. So having an amplifier that takes less voltage uh, for it to run full power is uh, certainly, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the amplifier. Uh, it just means that it only takes 1.2 volts to get it to, to get the full power. Whereas the, yeah, for example, the, yeah, the Yamaha you're looking at right there and the QSCs that we have all take 1.2 volts, but the Crown requires 1.4 volts. So when we do our shows that are bi-amplified, we usually do send uh, more voltage to the, uh, to the Crown amps than uh, what we need to do for the uh, mids and highs.
Okay, well, I hope this helps, and uh, thanks for watching.